No regrets, yeah? Yeah. No regrets. Super Boss Gauntlet is underway. As per the vote, I'll be doing this in score attack. Whether I find the right order or not is a whole other story. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who voted for this project specifics because this was a lot of fun finding out. Thanks to everyone who visited my sparring streams. It was fun having company during all the shenanigans. I'm probably not going to do anything like this again unless I hit another milestone, but I think I've been all hot Super Boss Cogger is soon enough. Just aside. It's time for the true test of skill to begin. I even have a set of custom slides I'll put in the description with links so you can give a listen to yourself. Let's do this, Kagura. Alright, round one is Hakume. This one was a personal choice because it really felt like poetic justice to start with the first super boss Russian roulette that I've ever done. I guess you can call me a crazy motherfucker for doing that, but at the same time, this one was actually the easiest time I've had fighting him outside of score attack. Of course, the real question is the death count. When I was doing this live, well, when it was supposed to be live, it was surprisingly still in the single digits. It was going to be in the double digits if I was doing it properly, but this would be a lot easier. Probably a lot better for my mental health and sanity. Headache. Not fun. In any case, whoever's watching at home, or probably at the premiere, if I do a premiere for this. By the time this is uploaded, Thanksgiving and Black Friday are probably not around, so it's like, have you guys enjoyed your holiday? I didn't actually by then. But, then again, I feel like I might have been doing it. I have my brother and his family come over. I was just getting to see my niece. So, I suppose holidays depend on person to person, whether or not you celebrate Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that fun stuff. So thankfully, this will probably go like this. New Year's 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 Surprisingly the easiest one, even though I did have some warm ups, especially with like my pressure strings and everything up like that. And then eating the spring rival. And then I almost ate the autumn departure. And yeah, that's how I took it the first try with the fucking near magic pixel. Still, that was actually a very fun one, so that's just the first round. Here comes the next round right here. Next up was Arakune. This one actually has a bit of history, especially with my luck during the sparring streams. I actually beat him first try during the dedicated Mu-12, Celica, and Arakune. This one, again, I still am kind of surprised that I beat this one first try a few times. Then again, the real pressure is not getting hit. Although, first get, not getting hit is one thing. Keeping up the pressure is a whole other thing. As you can see me, keeping up the stance pressure and the uh, Dragon's Ascent. And then there's like, using a invincibility in terms like a madman. And like, this is like, after the fact that when in the corner, if I end up side-swapping with the double flash kick to Katamos, I don't remember the name of the dragon that's supposed to be referencing. You'll see it soon enough. 
Although, I will say, the theme that I chose is personally a favorite because fighting a Rakune is very, very scary. And having such a relatively dark theme in, in contrast is relatively fitting. That and instead of, and there's like, instead of mud, there's mugs. It's fitting, don't you think? In any case, you'll probably be seeing what I'm talking about with my pressure resets soon enough when I reach the border. Because like, what I've learned is when I do the side swap with the double flash kick, I use forward stands and then instead of A for the side swap. Because it actually has been a relatively foolproof plan. Surprisingly. But, uh, even without active flow, I practically just demolish. In any case, that's round two. Pretty interesting, wouldn't you say? However, that doesn't change the fact that there's still eight more to go. So, jump cut to round three real quick. Now for round three, Bank Shishigami. This is actually where I started having a bit of a struggle. You'll see why. Because he is very unpredictable, and I'm still relatively shaken up at the fact that I actually did incur a fucking death count. However, this does lead into my next question. Do you guys have any New Year's resolutions? I think it's a fitting question because Bang's birthday is New Year's Day. And the stage I chose for this it looks like it's having a New Year's festival. So, might as well check. Because it's like. And it could be like anything small to big. Like, do you have any aspirations? Do you have any dreams that you want to see fulfilled? Or just, do you have a goal that you want to achieve? Like, honestly, if you ask me, my New Year's resolution is like finally a fucking stable job. I've not been very lucky with that. But that's really on me for not being able to look like for, for one. Because like I've always felt like I was not do it. But I also want to get my fucking driver's license because I still can't drive. Yeah, it's embarrassing. But I might as well address it now rather than just pretend it's not a thing. You know? However, let's not get too morbid and depressing. Although, there is one dream that I really want to I want to see if I can't make it to 300. Because if I was able to make it to 200, then it should be possible to make it to 3. Surprisingly, the uh, side swap bullshit hasn't happened yet. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. I say as I get fucking grabbed. Yeah, kind of embarrassing that I get grabbed. Three times. Probably four times almost. However, knowing my luck. That is my first death. Count the sound off the death counter. It is at one. One death. Hooray. Not really, but you know, post commentary gets to have fun a little bit. Though round two wasn't so much better, unfortunately, but it does give me a chance to like keep talking with all of you. Like you guys are pretty cool. People. I'm kind of genuinely happy at the following that I ended up getting this path like throughout this half of the year. And it all sort of started because I started playing Rivals of Ether so I had to I was able to do it on my then current laptop before it officially sent it off to the hills. Things fucking broken, like quite physically in the last. But the current one's doing okay. It's surprisingly held up a lot. Pretty thankful for that. Of course, it doesn't change the fact that the service will not be forgotten, even though it is as real as a fucking toenail. And I don't say that fucking lightly. Like, that thing is off its fucking fingers. It's like, actually right in front of me. And it's like, still flat on its ass. It somehow still fucking works in spite of that, which is a miracle in of itself, if you ask me. 
But that's neither here nor there. Although, see my pressure. I do see where I have some gaps, which gave Bang op ample opportunity to catch me. And the fact that I was able to be grabbed out of fucking 2 2 DB. And that, well, that I can understand has invincibility, because that's a super. It makes sense, but being grabbed out of Dragon Segway is a whole nother issue. And then there's that. That fucking nonsense. But it doesn't change the fact that it's still manageable, considering I was able to take a round off. Oh. At the same time, it's only a matter of time. There's always the chance that the AI can sometimes go ape shit and regular shit. It's actually the one thing I really enjoy about these kinds of challenges. It's like, you gotta be careful lest you get hit, and that happens. However, that is the second death to the counter. So, at the time, I was dreading that this might be the third time, but third time is the charm. As it always is. The wheel of fate is turning. And it, and I'm one. still hoping you guys will see that side swap tag in action properly when, when it's not getting fucking shafted. There it is. Yeah, it's like I go from the 6 dB to the 2 dB for the side swap sweeps. Even though that's not going to take a wiper, like a fucking moron. It still works. Ow. Agony. Pain. Suffering. If you'd be so inclined. Ow. Wait, why am I saying that? I'm not even, that's not even... I'm not even playing the game as I'm doing this commentary. Oh, right. To quickly explain the commentary suddenly... So, when I was recording this, I didn't even notice that my microphone settings on OBS were that low. So I'm like, wait, shit, I can't hear me. So, when I told my girlfriend about this, she's like, just do post commentary. It's like, okay, I guess I'll do that. Because it's like, on the one hand, I was dreading having to re record everything. Because, like, I was relatively proud of how this all went, in spite of the near double-digit death count. Now keep in mind that and make your guesses in the comments below. Or in the premiere chat. Depends. Again, it depends on if I'm actually doing this as a fucking premiere. It's like, it would be fun, but I'd actually need to be really Wait, what? Parks hitboxes, right? Goes the third and one. I keep up the pressure, praying to God he doesn't do anything stupid. Because I swear, if he does a command grab, I was going to die. Although, now the clock goes. There we go. Yeah, that's right. That's how I switched the round. The flash kick to Ender to Nidhogg. And then, this is the penultimate round where I win. However, it doesn't change the fact that super bosses can sometimes come back from the brink of death for victory. I would know this because Mu12, as you'll see way later, will genuinely demolish me after so many near chances of victory. I almost thought I was going to Astral them, because like, it looked like I was doing that good setup for an Astral Heat. But I really forgot. There it is! And this is like the one song that I had ready because I wanted it, because it's my favorite Astral team. However, that's enough of round three, so now is time for round four. And now for round four, Nato Kurgane. 
or Ragno the Edgelord, as some may know him. This one, he's the third death on the docket, surprisingly. Almost halfway in, I'm already like four death, like three deaths. But to be fair, it's just rock. It's just Naoto. I guess this is a good good time as ever to ask the next question that I had. At least the ones that I remembered. Because, like, I asked a lot of questions during all of this. And, like, hearing, like, my voice basically just not exist in these recordings almost was very demoralizing. But I'm at least remembering what I got. So, do you have a favorite side material to, like, a favorite series? Like, it could be a side manga, a side novel, drama CDs, if you'd be so inclined, or a spin-off game. Like... To strictly stay on the Blaze Blue topic, I was genuinely a fan of Phase Shift, but there is like a few other good options. Just, I don't remember them off the top of my head. Because there's just so many to really work with that turn to choose just one, you know? And again, it could be anything it could be side mangas, side games, side drama CDs. Or different adaptations that do things different than the source material. There's a lot of fair game, really. Oh, hey, there's that pressure reset, even though I got countered. I literally got myself punched in the nuts there figuratively. And literally, if I look at it hard enough, I'll, I'm not actually going to zoom in on that. That'd be, like, too much work. I'm already doing enough work doing this post com as it is. <laughs> Joke aside, yeah, it's like, I guess I just got overconfident, and that's why I got the death on Nato, unfortunately, but uh, what can I do? You can't really do much about that. But at the same time, this was definitely one of those things where it's like... Oh, right, I should also mention, Nato's unlimited, because I wanted to feel like he was a part of it. I didn't want him to feel left out, because he was on the path that I started. And without a super boss Nato, it's like, eh, Ragno the Edgelord, or Unlimited Nato as they call him, is just fitting. Ow. But I'm not even playing the game, why did I say ow? Oh yeah, that's why I, yeah, my hubris got me, because I was trying to Astral. I failed miserably. And that was what got me. That brings the death count up to three, and it will stay there for a while, surprisingly enough. But thankfully, getting to here is just good enough for me. On the plus side, I think I remember not to let my hubris win this time, and I actually played the game a bit more seriously. I also want to mention that I used the Dark War boss theme for this because it's like, it just felt like the most fitting as a fan of Dark War. A shame that it died like without even a full year to its name. And we didn't even get playable Ragna. That's what, that's the biggest fucking chip. We didn't get playable Ragna. That would have been so cool to see him coming back. God, I'm probably a bit sentimental in this game. It's been 15 years. I want something new. This is, like, arguably, like, the best we're gonna get, is seeing the community do all this crazy stuff. And then there's guys like me just throwing my head against the wall. But, at the same time, if I hadn't found Seth's content, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing this right now. So, I have to big, give a big shout-out to him for creating all this, because... He's very intuitive with what he does, because it's like, it always feels like his stuff has a strategy behind it. And then there's Unlimited S, the cursed one, which I need to do an actual video on that soon enough, because I did do a sparring stream segment where I fought her on Hell, and it's like, well, if I actually run start Wyvern, I'll win. Oh wait, no, that's actually bad. Check it out sometime, you'll see what I mean soon enough. But I do want to do something special with that, to see if I can actually do it. Because if I could be the craziest shit like Celica on hard mode, then hell mode shouldn't be a cinch. But anyways, with that in mind, moving on to the next matchup.
All right, halfway done. Next up is Hibiki Kohaku. This one actually has a fan-made OST for Kagura. This one is actually very cool though, and I'm sad that I basically had to talk over all of it, but then again, I'm linking all this shit in the description, so hopefully you'll get a good listen to it for yourself. And if I remember to like do any more personal stuff like this, I'll be sure to sneak it in somewhere, you know? Because like, until Super Boss Kagura comes out, this is like the only way I was able to be able to use it because it feels like it'd be a good thing. I guess with this one, I was very much trying to be careful not to get hit when he's in overdrive because I had like during the previous recording sessions that I'll mention at the end card, I actually got killed by the overdrive instant kill distortions. Which I wasn't expecting to see, but it was hilarious to witness. Holy shit, I got a perfect, that's right. A bit impressive if you ask me, but then again, Hibiki was just standing there being invisible like, like, a, like a dumbass. Now that I said that next time I fight him, he's gonna actually fucking clean shot. Probably a good thing that I did decide to do this instead of having to redo all of this, because I would have been so fucking frustrated having to do all of this a second time and probably having a higher death count than I already had, because I wasn't going to show this off and actually double the death count if I couldn't show it off, because that would have been so bullshit and unfair. But again, I guess me switching switching the format up unexpectedly is a bit unfair, and it's like, I apologize for that, but that was actually the shortest match, holy shit. If you'll excuse me, I have to prepare the jump cut to the next match. This one, this one is going to be crazy. It really doesn't help that I was actually going into this expecting to lose the first round, because it's literally SNK boss bullshit. Fitting with the King of Fighters theme in the background. I believe this one is Requiem for 50,000. Yeah, that's right. I have to the title card, sort of. So, it should be great. This is the one song I didn't choose personally because it was already in the Enchant Dragon Elf folder, so I wanted to do Seth the Solid and put that in for him. It's like, it just felt fitting. Of course. I feel like when I actually have to tackle Enchant Dragon of Azrael, I have to win. Because it's like, he's probably like scripted a lot of places. I forgot that. Ow. I'm not even playing the game. Why am I saying that? Like, I probably said it when I was recording this, so it makes a lot of sense. But, moving on. That is round one of my favor. I guess my hubris got to me, and that's how I probably like nearly died. But at the same time, one thing I will praise is like the custom idol stance is just epic. And I did have the idea, I can't exactly visualize it because I need to like actually like put sprites in the fucking table and all that. But I'm like, I'm imagining Kagura putting down his sword, walking up slowly, and doing his 5D8 punch because. Looking in the sprite list. Ow. Yeah, that's right. That's where my humors got me. I got blocked. I got. I got. Blackhawked. Where was I? Oh, right! Um, yeah, I'm imagining him doing his 5DA punch as a separate move. If he puts his sword down, it's like he legit has that set as a different sprite than the sword itself, like, because it's like, it's technically its own separate sprite, so it's like, he puts down the sword, walks up slowly, punches you, does a melee combo without the sword, before jumping right for- oh wow, that's the so game. And then he's like, grabs the sword, then does Lindworm, for a very epic, intricate stance combo, like that. I'm still very proud of at least the few Astros that I've gotten. However, 
With that, it means we're going on halfway, or past halfway at this point. Yay! See you at round seven. And next up is Bento Boy. I mean, Carl Clover. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I actually specifically sprung out for the Caligula reference because of who he's based on. Seth told me the theme to get for him and all that fun stuff. And surprisingly, even with Carl's hat box, or hat hit box, I'm not putting it on the screen this time because that would take a whole lot of work. Especially with the fact that I have to edit the death counts in. It was very close to being another roadblock for my victory. It really doesn't help that my spacing does need work, and the Exceed Excel is so fucking garbage to deal with. It feels like it's too skewed. But, then again, at least Carl isn't healing excessively. Oh, ho, 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 no. You'll see what I mean soon enough. But, as you can see, I still de de keep up the decent pressure, even with Nirvana on my ass like that, even though I got demolished. However... Now, the game's only begun, and I still have a round to make it up for it. Like so. I will say, the music in Caligula that I've heard is absolutely nuts, and I guess the real question is now... Like, this is probably a good question for, like, the Caligula fans out there, because, like, I have not played the game. I want to, though, but do you guys have any favorite character in the Caligula series? It can be anyone from either protagonist group, it can be the protagonists themselves, the musicians, it can be, it can be anything, really, because it's like, when I think about it, oh yeah, that's right, that happened, I almost died, where was I? Oh, right, um, the idea that I had for my initial question back here was that I wanted to see Shogo and Kotaro in a fighting game setting because Shogo would like have big sword normals with his gun, but with like a bit of a hybrid grappler. But I wanted to see Rushdown Grappler Hybrid Kotaro with Rescue Man install because like I thought that was so fucking cool during the Kaliga anime seeing Kotaro's Rescue Man persona, and I wanted to see it happen. It would just be so cool. Although, again, that is something for people who actually know what Caligula is. It's probably a bit of an alienating question, but as someone who's not exactly in the know himself, I just thought it would be neat. And here comes the cross-up! Well, I don't exactly call it a cross-up, more so set, like, option select, because on the one hand, they're probably expecting 6A, but it's actually 6B, 6B, because I actually, like, come from behind. And then there's the Astral! I actually might have to make an Astral counter now that I think about it. Like, landed rather than whipped, mind you. But that's just me. However, I will see you guys for round A. And then, round eight was Relius Clover. This was actually a heck of a lot of fun, partly because of the remix, but, this one's a bit longer because Rally has actually incurred my fourth death after a bit of a clean streak of only of keeping it at three. Although, not a bad thing because I'm not relatively keenly aware of Machinator Rally, so it's like it's been a learning experience. Though I will say, it's it's more good excuse to listen to this epic remix of his theme from Chrono Phantasma where he fights Valkenheim. The same person who made the theme I used for Hibiki Super Boss made this one, GVG Kid. Give this stuff a look. It is some very, very well made stuff. However, seeing my pressure here, the big thing that I felt was the strategy was keep Relius from using Ignis because it's like. Oh, yeah, that's right. I saw the command grab. And I was like, what the fuck? And then, Exceed Excel. <laughs> Of course, doesn't change the fact that the, the the name of the game with fighting Machinator Relius is keep punching him and pray to god his wife doesn't come free, because hit stun is a bitch. As you can see, it's like, she's in a hunched state, 
every time I hit her. Hit Relius. Although if, in block stun, it's a different case, but in hit stun, it's the case. You can see my quarter pressure is immaculate for what it's worth. I say as I do fucking 5C! Pass me, you fucking idiot! Why did you 5C? Of course, I still win, but, you know. I'm. Ugh, God. I'm still questioning why the fuck I did 5C. I think I was supposed to be charging a C Fafnir, but it didn't come out. And it's like, why did I do that? Why did I think that? Then again, not really much I can really think of that is different. So I guess my next question is that I remember. Do you guys have a favorite song remix? And it could be fan made, official, etc., etc. Like, from the official end, I genuinely like Imperial Code 2. But you might be wondering, isn't that heresy for liking a 2 over a 1? It's like, I just like the instrumentation of Imperial Code 2. It's not that bad. Alternatively, some of the songs in the Axe and Core Saga of Guilty Gear. Oh, yeah, that's where I fucking like the first fucking. I asked him when I failed spectacularly. And then I fell out of that. And, like, in my confusion, I got roller. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah, we get to listen to the theme again, at least. So it's like, there's always a positive. But, yeah, for fan raid remixes, I still point my hands towards this remix of Dissonance, but... I really don't know any other good remixes out for, in the Blazer sense, but in the Guilty Gear sense, I do want to recommend GVG's Slayer theme remix and other Guilty Gear themes. Like, he was able to recreate most of them by ear in terms of the Exard and other Chrono Phantasma related tracks, because at the time they were stuck in arcades. Funnily enough, I was the one who suggested he do recreations of both Sector 7 and 6 Heroes, and I provided the samples that I could find from decently clean matches. He made some very interesting stuff. Oh, hey, I got it perfect. Where was I? Oh, right. Yeah, he made some very wonderful takes of those songs, and it's like, it's good seeing that people with a keen ear are able to do something like that when resources are limited. However, on the plus side... Seeing my patented option select bullshit is funny. Ow, ow, pain. Wait, why am I saying that? I'm not even playing the game. This is post commentary. Good what the fuck? In any case, it does seem like we're gonna be nearing the next round, but I'm going to have to put a preemptive sound warning because, oh boy. Well, not this, but there's going to be a lot of deafening noises when we reach the next fight, so I will see you guys for the penultimate matchup. All right, so as I said before, sound warning because Jules' satellite is very loud. Moo12 is the one that actually gave me the most shit, unsurprisingly. But to be fair, I've come to expect this because of her bullet hell tendencies. I will say, I feel like I chose the right fucking music for this because this song from Agarus War, very fitting for what is the second to final boss in this little escapade of mine. And you'll see how I improve throughout. Actually, let's make a little game out of this. Count how many times Moo uses Kusanagi's Anger. I'm probably not going to edit it in, but if I do, you'll probably get the right number. If you skip. Oh, there's one right there. That's one Kusanagi's Anger. Because, quite literally, that, that move just shows up no matter what I do. It's, it's like, I'm practically traumatized seeing those satellites. Like, the second I see it, it's like, oh god. There have been few times where I have been able to avoid it, but those are few and far between. However, I am capable of taking rounds off the bitch. Ow. 
I'm not even playing the game. Why'd I do that? Still, it is funny seeing that happen. However, this is where it all starts going downhill, at least for the first round. I land the forward throw. I land the sonic boom. I get the low combo to Wyvern to Venida, Fafnir, Kadamos. Kadamos again, you fool. Sweet. Wyvern, Segway, Flash Kick, follow up, follow up, Wyvern. I have to remember all these dragons' names, I realize, because I really only recognize Wyvern, Ashtaha. Oh, Kizunaga's anger number two! Jewel Satellite number one! Ear warning! Jewel Satellite number two! Ow, 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 god, my ears. Everything. I'm definitely gonna have to turn on the sound warning for this. But yeah, as you can see, again, the second Moo gets any form of momentum, it all goes downhill from here, unfortunately. I think I panicked seeing that, thinking it was Kusanagi's anger, but it wasn't. 195C! Why did I 6C into that? Oh, Kusanagi's name number, number 2, I think? Uh, pa future me will actually remember it. Imperial Ray. Alright. That makes the death count five. Give it up for death count number five. I actually did keep count of the deaths. So, you'll have a fully accurate death count list soon enough. However, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to have fun. And watch my suffering. Or at least watch past me suffering. Okay, I do the follow up. 6C, Wyvern, freeze up, 2B. I cheese the Kusanagi's anger with Overdrive to Exceed Excel. Because, like, that and Flash Kick are actually invincible to the startup. So I was actually able to cheese at that time. I eat the kick to everything else. Bullet Hell. I barrier that. Overdrive. Ear warning! But yeah, it's like, when Moo gets the momentum, you're fucked if you're not careful. Or if you're me and you're too rifleless and you get Kusanagi's anger, like, how many fucking times at this point? Like so! <laughs> wow, I need to stop proving my pa I need to stop proving my fucking point. I will say, the one courtesy of, like, the satellites not even shooting while she's in hit stun is a very nice courtesy, because it's like, you don't want to get- you don't want to fucking drop a combo because you got shot. Probably, like, the most infuriating thing that has happened. However, it doesn't change the fact that when you are able to finally beat these challenges in spite of the odds, it's a very amazing experience! Overdrive Kusanagi's anger scares me. However, that knocks the death count up to six. Six deaths. And I believe there's only two more before I actually succeed, which spoils the death count a little bit, but I'll still count the numbers. Besides, this isn't the final fight. It's at number three. Sadly, third time was not the charm for this one. Preemptive spoilers aside, I will say, it's like, through the past few screams of sparring, it has been a steady learning process of learning more combo routes and more what can I do, rather than what I should do. Because I learned Wyvern to 2B to Flash Kick is a valid combo. And then even before that, I learned about the double Flash Kick. The double Flash Kick. Cop. That's the sec- Okay, that was funny. Because I cheese it with the Exceed Excel, and then I got Exceed Excel in return. It's like, wow, she read me like a book. Ear warning! Never mind. The one thing that Wyvern doing that actually does... Oh yeah, that's right, that clash. I remember being so caught off guard by that. And it's like, oh shit, 
Yeah, I fucked up because I clashed. However, 2C from downtown, Wyvern, 3C, Wyvern, Segway, that missed. Pressure, the pressure begins. The pressure begins. The pressure begins. There we go. Getting that stray fatal hit off of a 5A. Stellar. Follow up. Wyvern, Segway, 5A. 6C, 2C, Flash Kick. Follow up. Wyvern, 2A. Follow up. 6A, 2C, Flash Kick. Flash Kick. Follow up. 6B, 2C, 5A. Pressure, pressure begins. Oh shit. Oh yeah, that's right, I did get it perfect. I was like, screeching, it's like, oh shit, when's she going to Kusanagi's anger me? However, again, I still don't I still don't win, but I'll take any little victory. Like, if I'm able to get it perfect on these things, it's like, it's great. It's like, I actually have enough prowess to actually keep the up, keep up the offense. Six feet, oh wait, no wait, I throw. Throw to Lindworm. Flash kick, follow up. Because I was half anticipating the Kusanagi. Follow up. Wyvern. 2C. Flash kick. Follow up. Follow up. I get dunked into the floor. I do that. XCXL to dodge the lasers. I Wyvern into Kusanagi's anger like a fucking dipshit. And I get dive bombed. Which, I will admit, is funny. It was, like, legit funny. It's like, I expect the Kusanagi's anger. No, I get lasered. I counter it. And then, oh. There's the Kusanagi's anger. But yeah, the death count is now seven. At least I believe I counted right. Uh, again, future me will probably fix that up. Now then. Run start Wyvern. 2C. Wyvern. 2C. 2B. C flash kick. C follow up. Follow up. Wyvern. 2A. 6C, Wyvern, 2B, flash kick, follow up. I'm just like making it a game of like, if I remember the fucking inputs that I do. Cause like, watching myself play is like, different than actually playing, and Kusanagi's anger, dead. Like these matches end sooner than they begin, the second that the enemy goes into overdrive, because overdrive distortions hurt. They hurt a lot. And what I've noticed, they never use Burst. Which, probably for the best, because they wouldn't need to use their crazy bullshit mechanics. Bad warning, if I'm not getting armored to death, Kusanagi's anger, just make me suffer. That one was a fucking clean sweep. That brings the death counter up to eight. Which, I believe, this means this next one is the hard-earned victory that I was looking for. The wheel of fate is turning. And again, one. this was not the worst. Surprisingly, I didn't consider Mu-12 to be the worst fight. Annoying, sure, but personally not my worst. You'll know who it is soon enough. If you have been following the screams for what it's worth. It makes what fucking happens all the more fucking ironic. 6C, 2C. I missed the Crush Trigger Launcher. Go into Exceed Excel. Flash Kick. Follow up. Follow up. Lindworm. That gets fucking stuffed by a normal. I get hit by that. I get hit by that. Um. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. She approaches me menacingly. Oh yeah, sound warning. Forgot about that. Even if it ends, still sound warning. Is that shit's fucking loud? And I didn't think to turn down my sound effects at the time when I did this. Six C, Wyvern, two B, flash kick, follow up, follow up. Six C, Wyvern, two B, flash kick, follow up. Throw. Lindworm. Flash kick. Because I have learned. To anticipate wake up Kusanagi's anger. So I flash kick. 2, 2E. 5A. Wyvern. 2B. 5A. Wyvern. 2C. 5A. Wyvern. 2C. 5A. 
<laughs> Wyvern 2C 5A saved me to victory. Hooray, and I got another perfect. I will say, I really do love this song, so I was happy that I was able to make it fit in somewhere. Though, I will say, the custom OST process was a very fun one to learn, so when I was able to finally understand it, I was like, sweet, I can actually do this neat project with special OSTs of my choosing. And I'm hoping when I get a chance to do this properly, with every character in the game, and they all have their own super bosses, I'll probably do this right. Yep, sound warning. 5C, 6C. That's right, I asked on her. Which means, all that's left. All right, ignore that. Um, That was because my controller exists. However, that is not the final boss. That is the penultimate boss. It's time. This is the final battle. And... Probably the most anticlimactic conclusion I ever thought of. Yes, the stage choice is intentional because this boss was a thorn in my side for the past while. Celica A. Mercury, Steel Maiden. Sister of Nine, the Phantom. Sister in law of Jubei, the strongest of the six heroes. Kokonoi's aunt. And Minerva's handler. And the original handler of Nirvana. So, I just want to say it right now, Celica fucking Mercury is the bane of my existence with a hard AI. So, like, if I ever have to fight her on hell, I will probably go bald from the stress. I'll probably get stress headaches, I'll have to drink a lot of water, my blood pressure will spike. However, I at least say that... In spite of all of the pain and transgression and suffering, this is a very fun, active test of are you prepared for everything that a boss will throw at you? Like, it could be sudden wake up super, sudden wake up DP, anything. Because any chance, any second spent not hitting Celica, she will heal. And that's especially apparent with her distortion drives. Because any stray hit will keep you in so long where it's like, say, if you have her at red, she'll be right back in perfect health without any hesitation. And I land the wyvern to finish off round one. And that took 79 fucking seconds! Like, she's a damage sponge for punishment, and I am, like, I'm all for that. Like, I, at first, I would have felt, oh, this needs to be a bit toned down, but it's like, at the same time, if you're not pouring on the damage fast enough, then, then, I'm sorry, if you get timed out by fucking Steel Maiden Celica, then I don't know what to tell you. I have actually gotten to the single digits in terms of her fucking time limit and it's like it's basically pretty much you're practically wailing on her like nothing else and the fact that I beat this in one try makes this so depressingly anticlimactic I was expecting to actually lose but with that I'm gonna cut to the end card and you'll see the death count and all that fun stuff there thank you for humoring my bullshit <laughs> Oh, right. That's the gauntlet. Uh, hopefully I'll remember to edit the first part with, like, a little bit of a text to say versus mode instead of score attack, because, my god, I have a whole archive's worth of salt, both with and without commentary, because on the one hand, I wanted to do it live, but then I got too salty, and then, like, okay, we'll do it in post. I got even saltier, and then, well, as you can see, I feel like this is a better result because it lets me actually pace myself, and I actually felt like I had a lot more fun, in spite of everything. Anyway, I'll have the end card with the total death count, and, uh, uh actually, on second thought, the real question is, where the fuck is Kagura? I literally left him in front of the stands like 10 minutes ago and uh, I'll catch you guys later.